Om Namo Narayanaya. Welcome, sweet practitioner. This is Mahalakshmi with Ranas Practice. Thank you so much for joining me for the cultivation and meditation on equanimity, balance and evenness of mind, which can be sought after at times of adversity as well as times of good fortune. Today we'll focus on the practice and benefits of equanimity during times that we feel difficulties, we feel challenges, and we'll share various ways in which we can stay balanced on the level of the action, on the level of the senses, as well as on the level of the mind. We'll practice affirmations, positive thinking, and japa meditation. This is a type of meditation during which we repeat a Sanskrit mantra to stay rooted in our true self. Before we dive in, We'll tune to the teachers and the teachings with the Sanskrit mantra, which is asking not just for brilliance of learning, but also for protection of the student and the teacher. We'll start with three ohms and then we'll chant the mantra, which you can see on the screen. Join me as you feel comfortable. Let's sit comfortable with the spine up straight. Hands are in chin mudra, index and thumb touching together at the tip. Or you can have the palms open right on the top of the left one. Inhale deeply through the nose for three ohms. Oh. 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 Sahana Vavatu, Sahano Bunaktu, Saha Viryam Karavavahai, Tejas Vina Vadhi Tamastu, Ma Vadvisha Vahai Hium, Shanti Shanti Shanti, Om Peace, 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 Umbulu Sadguru Shivananda Maharaj Ki Jai, Umbulu Shri Swami Vishnadevananda Maharaj Ki Jai, Om Namo Narayanaya. Swami Shivananda shares a few insights on equanimity. He says, Equanimity is equality or evenness of mind or temper. It is a balanced mind in pleasure and pain, success and failure, honor and dishonor, censure and praise. Right away, Swami Ji reminds us that this world is a world of opposites. Pleasure and pain, failure and success, gain and loss, love and hate, censure and praise, you name it. And it is that quality of the mind that allows us to stay balanced regardless of which direction the world pulls us, the relationships to people, the situations that we find ourselves in, regardless where they take us, it will be in either direction. But it is that ability and skillful manner in which we respond to these situations, respond to the people. Swamiji shares, equanimity is composure of spirit, especially calmness and steadiness of mind amidst trying circumstances. So when we feel stressed, distressed, shaken, that's when we start to feel fearful. And that fear obstructs our true nature and doesn't allow us to be as compassionate, as loving, as caring as we could be. In this world of pairs of opposites, man is tossed about hither and thither by various waves of emotion. The emotions are very powerful and here Swamiji acknowledges that because they are the ones that so easily throw us into each direction. We swing like a pendulum from one way to the other. He says, now a man gets gained success, honor, praise. The next moment we get failure, loss, dishonor, censure, and disappointment. The man who has evenness of mind or poise can pull on this world joyfully and peacefully. The Swamiji shares how regardless of what happens to us, when we stay rooted in our true nature, when we stay balanced, that's when we can stay 
peaceful that's when we can stay joyful at any situation at any moment Swamiji as a realized sage shares that this development this cultivation of balance is not something that happens overnight its benefits are enormous but it does take time to develop it does take practice to develop as a self-realized sage Swami Shivananda shares that the one who is ever established in balance and equanimity has always an evenness of mind and equanimity or poise. He or she has a perfect, unshakable balance of mind rooted in insight, intuition, or Atman. Atman is the higher self. So Swami Ji shares the insight that when we are balanced, that means that we are rooted in our true self, in the insight, in the intuition. This is our connection with the divine. This is our connection to the liveliness which runs through everything and everyone and every creature, every creation in this universe. He says, when we stay rooted, when we stay centered in that connection, in that true self, that is when we're able to remain even that is when our mind is able to remain steady and unshaken by anything that comes so the main question is how do we maintain how do we cultivate and grow this evenness this steadiness of mind amidst a storm of circumstances a hurricane of emotions that throws in one direction, one moment, and the other direction in the next moment. There are various practices by which we can come back to our balanced state. On the level of the action, we can come back to balance by performing selfless service or volunteering. When we share our skills and time with people who are in need, with someone who can benefit, without any gain that is when we come back to our true nature of giving of being loving and kind and helpful and when we come back to our own situation we look at things differently we see the blessings and the opportunities that these challenging circumstances present to us the opportunity to grow these situations often shine light in the areas of life where we can grow into. Another way in which we can stay balanced through actions is when we are generous and we perform charity. We have separate practices where we dive deeper into various ways of being generous and staying charitable. Please go and explore them. They're beautiful, beautiful practices. On the level of the senses, we can also stay balanced because senses are very closely related to emotions. Think of the senses as instruments through which we experience the world, right? We feel the cold, the heat, we hear, we see. To stay balanced in the senses mostly means to keep those instruments as pure as possible because when they're pure they allow our inner self or inner light to shine as bright as it can the more established in our true self we will be how to keep the sense of touch pure by taking a shower if you're in a challenging situation and right this moment take a shower and have the intention to rinse all the negativity that this situation brings you and notice how you feel after the shower on the level of the hearing a way to keep it pure is by listening to harmonious sounds by listening to chants to beautiful songs listening to tibetan bows or chimes any sound that really we find joyful pleasureful beautiful to listen to we can also listen to inspiring talks the way to purify the vision is by reading inspiring talks to purify the vision we can also look at inspiring images of saints and sages or look at nature beautiful 
scenes of nature. Or look at the plants, how perfect they are just the way they are, how vibrant and how lively they are. To keep the speech pure and balanced is to keep it truthful. Swamiji says, speak little, speak the truth. Speak from a place of kindness and a place of love, a place where you want to build the other person up. It will carry through and your words will reach their destination, the soul of the other person. To keep the taste pure could be done in a couple of ways. One way is to do fasting. And you can do water fast, you can do dry fast, you can do it for one day, you can do it for three days. You can do it with fruits and milk or fruits and nuts. But in either case, check with a dietitian or your doctor, functional medicine doctor, that will help you find out what is the best way for you to practice fasting. And what would be the frequency in which you can practice, whether it's once a week, once every two weeks or once a month, check with them. They will be able to help you. Another way to stay balanced in the taste is to have vegetarian meals. You can choose to have your next meal to be vegetarian or once a day to have a vegetarian meal or once a week. Find a schedule that works for you. Also, keep listening to your inner self and allow your practice, your growth, your evolution to support your food choices. There are many benefits for vegetarian meals, but if they come from outside as something opposed onto you, even if you're the one opposing it on yourself, the benefits are not going to be as big as they could be. So listen to yourself, listen to where you are in this moment, and Try things and see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Usually, it takes a couple of steps. Maybe it's once a week of fasting. Maybe it's one day a week of vegetarian meals. See what works for you. Find your perfect recipe. And remember that it can change with time. To stay balanced on the level of the mind, it can be achieved through any of the yogic practices. It could be through Hatha Yoga. It could be through meditation. It could be through pranayama very much. And Aloma Viloma is a very balancing breathing technique that allows us to come back to center in just a couple of minutes. Today, we'll practice a couple of these. If you're unfamiliar with Kapalabhati breathing or pranayama, I'll guide you through them as we do them. But also feel free to explore the practices that are dedicated specifically on each one of them and find the counts and the number of repetitions that work best for you. So let's get started. I'll move a little bit further so you can see as my abdomen and my diaphragm contracts and expands. So Kapalabhati is the active exhalation and passive inhalation. We'll sit with the spine up straight. Hands are in chin mudra, index and thumb touching together at the tip. The head is straight, chin is parallel to the ground. We'll start with two deep breaths and then we'll do two rounds of Kapalabhati breathing followed by a few seconds of retention. Before we practice Kapalabhati breathing, make sure that there are at least two hours since you last ate. If you are pregnant, please skip to the portion of an Aloma Viloma. Don't practice Kapalabhati breathing. And if you feel dizzy at any moment, pause and come back to normal breathing until the dizziness goes away. You most likely have hyperventilated because of the higher level of oxygen. If you're ready to practice Kapalabhati breathing, let's start with two deep breaths. Otherwise, fast forward to the practice of Analoma Viloma, alternate nostril breathing. Inhale deeply through the nose, abdomen, ribcage and chest expand. And exhale completely through the nose. Abdomen, ribcage, and chest relax. One more time, inhale. And exhale through the nose. Inhale comfortably. Exhale, 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 exhale. 
Hexel, 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 Hexel. Exhale completely. And inhale through the nose deeply. Exhale completely through the nose. Inhale one more time. And exhale completely. Inhale a comfortable breath and retain the breath. Fifteen seconds. Exhale completely through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. Second round. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale to 80% capacity or a comfortable breath. Chest expand and exhale, abdomen, ribcage, and chest relax. Inhale to 80% capacity and retain the breath. Twenty seconds, exhale completely. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Come back to normal breathing. And notice how you feel. We'll continue with Anoloma Viloma, alternate nostril breathing. Left hand stays in chin mudra, thumb and index finger touching together. The right hand goes into Vishnu mudra, index and middle finger tucked in. The other three fingers are stretched out. The thumb will open and close the right nostril. The ring finger and the pinky will close and open the left nostril. Inhale through the nose deeply. And exhale through the nose deeply. One more time, inhale deeply, abdomen, ribcage and chest expand. And exhale completely, abdomen, ribcage and chest relax. Bring the hand to the chest, close the right nostril and inhale through the left for three. On one, on two, on three, retain for twelve. On 9, on 10, on 11, on 12, exhale right for 6, on 1, on 2, on 3, on 4, on 5, on 6, inhale right, on 1, on 2, on 3, retain for 12. On 9, on 10, on 11, on 12, exhale left, on 1, on 2, on 3, on 4, on 5, on 6, inhale left. One, on two, on three, retain. On nine, on ten, on eleven, on twelve, exhale right. On one, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six, inhale right. On one, on two, on three, retain. On 10, on 11, on 12, exhale left, on 1, on 2, on 3, on 4, on 5, on 6, inhale left, 1, on 2, on 3, retain. On 
9 on 10 on 11 on 12 exhale right on 1 on 2 on 3 on 4 on 5 on 6 inhale right on 1 on 2 on 3 retain Of 10, 11 on 12, exhale, left on 1 on 2 on 3 on 4 on 5 on 6, inhale, left 1 on 2 on 3, retain. Nine on 10, on 11 on 12, exhale, right on 1 on 2 on 3 on 4 on 5 on 6, inhale, right 1 on 2 on 3, retain, last retention. Nine, on ten, on eleven, on twelve, exhale, left, on one, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six. Lower the hand, inhale through both nostrils. And exhale through both nostrils. Inhale deeply. And exhale completely. Wonderful job, my friend. Keep your focus on the breath. And allow your mind to come back to the teachings of equanimity. If it's not too painful, think of a situation that threw you off balance, that really shook you. It could be a present situation or one from the past. Imagine now that there is someone. It's an acquaintance of yours, friend, who is going through the same thing that you are going through. Observe them from a distance and share with them, remind them that everything that has a beginning has an end. This is a natural law of this world. Everything is temporary. Repeat to them a couple of times. It is all going to pass. And note it to yourself as well. It is all going to pass. It is all going to pass. Now try to encourage them by reminding them that every challenge is a blessing in disguise. Encourage them to see the silver lining. Every challenge comes to us through various people and various situations to shine light in the areas of our life where we can grow and expand and be more virtuous and more kind and more loving. Ask them and yourself if there is one thing to be grateful for in this situation, what will it be? Did it reveal the changing nature of things? of relationships? Did it remind you to be more loving and more kind? Did it save you troubles down the line? What can you be grateful for? Now share with that person how the sun shines evenly upon everyone. Regardless of their deeds, regardless of the kind or unkind words that they speak, the sun does not discriminate. It is even and fair with its brightness and warmth towards everyone. 
So is our true nature. So is the divine, seated equally in every being, in every creature. And these circumstances, the people in them, they all have the divine essence. See them as instruments of the divine, which help you grow, which help you become more mature and more established in balance admits the hurricane of emotions, admits the storm of circumstances. We'll now repeat the Sanskrit mantra Om Samam Brahman which means exactly that the divine is seated equally in all beings, Om Samam Brahman. Repeat it out loud with me or mentally to yourself. Om Samam Brahman. Om Samam. Brahman. Oh, 
of silent meditation. As you feel comfortable, open your eyes if they were closed. Notice how you feel. Let me know in the comments below. Or if you have any questions, let me know. May that balance remain for the rest of your day with you. Om Namo Narayanaya.